The documentary, entitled This is Paris, reveals that Paris Hilton was abducted and forced to attend a school that engaged in MK Ultra style torture. Maybe unwillingly, the documentary also shows how Paris is still under the control of powerful handlers. If one recalls the early 2000s, you might remember douchebags wearing Ed Hardy trucker hats, and everyone being obsessed with Paris Hilton. Mostly known for wearing sunglasses, and saying that's hot, Paris was the original, why is she famous celebrity? The reality TV show, The Simple Life, crystallized her spoiled dumb blonde persona, as the entire series revolved around her, being clueless, and expressing that cluelessness with a high-pitched baby voice. Well, according to the new documentary This Is Paris, this was all an act. Furthermore, it asserts that Paris is actually a brilliant businesswoman who created a hugely lucrative brand by fully utilizing the power of social media. The documentary repeats several times that Paris is the original influencer, which is probably true. Well this is Paris spends a lot of time, documenting a glamorous life filled with fancy traveling and fancier clothing, it also reveals some darker chapters in Paris's life. For instance. Her parents paid to have her kidnapped and sent to a boarding school where students were abused, drugged, and tortured on a daily basis. What? That's not hot. That's not hot at all. Why would the heiress of the Hilton Hotel's empire be willingly sent to such an awful place by her parents? The reasoning is pretty strange. In fact, the entire documentary is filmed in a strange manipulative way. Indeed, well this is Paris contains elements found in standard documentaries, such as interviews and archive footage, most of it is filmed in typical reality TV fashion, like keeping up with the Kardashians. And, at the risk of bursting your bubble, most reality TV is scripted. Thus, one cannot help but feel that there's some rehearsed fakeness going on there. Whether willingly or not, the documentary actually reveals that Paris is still under the control of powerful industry handlers. Here's a look at this is Paris. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The documentary starts with Paris traveling to exotic places while saying, yes, to things she likes. Then, things take a darker turn. Paris says. Something happened to my childhood that I never talk about with anyone. I experienced it. And, to this day, I'm still traumatized. According to the documentary, teenage Paris liked to sneak out of the house and party too much. In an attempt to correct that flaw, her parents sent her to an outdoor wilderness program for teenage boys and girls needing a change in attitude and direction. It didn't go too well for her. After a failed attempt to run away from the camp, Paris got smacked in the face in front of everyone else to set an example. Not Yas. Not Yas at all. At the age of 17, her parents arranged for two to kidnap her and take her to a boarding school. This is the documentary's recreation of this sickening family moment. Paris was sent to Provo Canyon School in Utah, an establishment with a long history of abuse allegations. The school still exists today, and its official website actually addresses the negative media attention it has been receiving. This is a notice on the official website of Provo Canyon School. Paris Hilton's description of her experience at this school indicates that it uses MK Ultra style abuse and torture. She said, You're sitting on a chair, staring at the wall, all day long, getting yelled at, or hit. I felt like, a lot of the people who work there, got off on torturing children, and seeing them naked. They would prescribe everyone all these pills. I didn't know what they were giving me. I would just feel so tired and numb. Some people in that place were just gone. Like, the lights are on, but there's no one home. Solitary confinement was like something out of one flew over the cuckoo's nest. They made people take their clothes off and go in there, like, for 20 hours. Someone was in the other room with a straight jacket, screaming. I was freezing, I was starving, I was alone, and I was scared. As explained in the previous video, about origins and techniques of monarch mind control, all of the treatments just described are staples in MK Ultra. The abuse, the drugs, and the torture are designed to break the victim and to cause dissociation. Is Provo Canyon School an actual MK programming site? Or does it use a light version of it to reprogram its troubled students? Unclear. At one point, Paris says. It made me not trust anyone, not even my own family. Despite saying that, the documentary shows that her family and some powerful outside people are still controlling her life.
Well, the documentary presents Paris as a survivor who attained freedom through success, it also shows that she is surrounded by people who appear to be extremely controlling. First, there's her mother, Kathy Hilton. She was a child actor who grew up in show busyness. At one point, Paris says, my mother treats me like I'm 12. Which says a lot about her relationship with her family. Although Kathy arranged for Paris to get kidnapped and sent to Provo Canyon School, she apparently only learned about the abuse that was happening there while filming the documentary. This is Kathy Hilton's reaction after being told that Paris was abused at that school. How can a wealthy and well-connected family such as the Hiltons not know about the things that were happening at that school prior to sending one of their daughters? I said one of their daughters because the other one didn't go there. Nikki Hilton Rothschild. Contrarily to Paris who complains about constantly ending up with boyfriends who are intimidated by her wealth, Nikki found a way to be the poor girl in her marriage. Indeed, while the Hilton's family fortune is estimated at $900 million, her husband's family wealth is estimated at, take a deep breath, $700 trillion. That's because she is married to James Rothschild, the only son of Amschel Mayor James Rothschild, the executive chairman of Rothschild Asset Management of the Rothschild Banking Family of England. In other words, she's married into the elite. Throughout the documentary, Nikki appears to be rather harsh and judgmental towards her sister. When Paris asks Nikki why she was not sent to the boarding school, she replies. You were very naughty, with little to no compassion. In short, it is almost as if Nikki was always protected by her parents, while Paris was the chosen one to become an industry pawn. Beyond her family, there are some powerful industry people hovering around Paris. For instance, media strategist Shiraz Hassan is seen micromanaging Paris's events during the documentary. According to the Medium article entitled, Meet Shiraz Hassan the man who controls Hollywood, Shiraz Hassan controls Hollywood. The article states. In 2010, Shiraz founded his own social media, marketing and amplification firm, Shiraz Incorporated. He has overseen campaigns for some of the most famous celebrities in the world, including Kim Kardashian, Jennifer Lopez, Justin Bieber, Selena Gomez, Zendaya, Priyanka Chopra, Paris Hilton and the Jackson family, as well as internationally recognized brands, including Procter & Gamble, Unilever, Ab InBev, Johnson & Johnson, Pantene & Gillette, generating over $2 billion in earned media. His experience spans the earth as he has worked with government agencies and entrepreneurs in Europe, the Middle East, India and Asia. Hassan appears to specialize in industry slaves, such as Kim Kardashian, Kylie Jenner, Justin Bieber, Selena Gomez, Lindsay Lohan, and, of course, Paris Hilton. During the documentary, we see Hassan filming Paris with his phone, while calling her the boss bitch. However, a little later, we see him telling Paris to go to bed in a bossy and authoritative manner. Hassan symbolically towers over Paris as he tells her to go to bed. He repeats. Hair and glam at 8. Ready at 8. Then he leaves with an annoyed look. Who's really the boss in this scenario? Then, there's this other boss that's been hovering around Paris since forever. This screenshot shows Paris with Kris Jenner, head of the Kardashian Coven. There are several links between Paris Hilton and the Kardashians. First, they both use the services of the aforementioned Shiraz Hassan. Second, Kim Kardashian started her career as a Paris's assistant. Third, both of Paris and Kim attained new levels of fame and infamy with leaked sex tapes. As explained in the article entitled, Kanye West exposes dark truths about Kardashians, tries to break away from them, Kris Jenner is said to have organized the whole Kim Kardashian tape stunt. Were the forces involved in Paris's tape? In the documentary, Paris says, It was a private moment of a teenage girl, not in her right headspace. And everyone was watching it and laughing. It was like being electronically raped. Was this forced humiliation part of her initiation in the industry? Well this is Paris reveals some interesting facts about Paris Hilton, it doesn't take long before realizing that there's something off about this documentary. Its whole scripted reality TV vibe indicates that its narrative was carefully shaped to serve specific purposes. A cynical mind would argue that the documentary was actually an attempt to rebrand Paris to add depth to her character and, perhaps, make her somewhat relevant again. An even more cynical mind would argue that Paris's handlers framed the documentary's narrative to reveal the abuse in her past, while removing all blame from said handlers. While the documentary presents Paris as a successful woman who liberated herself from her past, the shady characters that still revolve around her indicate that she's probably more controlled than ever. And that's not hot at all. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss.
As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.